Shoot. Hello. Hi. It's going. I'm streaming. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is so hard, you guys. This is a lot harder than it looks. I spent all day trying to get my GoPro to work as the camera and it's not working very good. It's super laggy. I use it for lessons. So those of you in my lessons get the GoPro as the camera. Um, but today I'm using the lousy built-in FaceTime camera. <laughs> so it's kind of grainy. So I do apologize for that. But at least it's not lagging. So I think you'll get a better quality tutorial. You guys should be able to hear my audio now. Everything should be good. So thanks for checking it out. Okay, everybody today, the goal is um, to have a tutorial where a total noob uh, can learn to record their vocals or can learn to, um, you know, have a, a, a vocal recording for like a cover for YouTube or a audition. Realistically, most of the stuff you're going to be doing, you're going to have to do at home now. So you're going to really need to learn how to do this. I have a lot of students who take lessons with me that ask me questions about recording. And I'm always referring them to YouTube. And it occurred to me that maybe I should um, be doing some YouTube uh tutorials myself on how to do this. So, um, all right. So if I want to start, um, with GarageBand today, I'm going to eventually do Reaper. I might have time to do Reaper today, but I think I'm just going to do GarageBand. The two. So the first thing that you need to know is that the two, um, it, main programs that are inexpensive for newcomers are going to be GarageBand if you have a Mac or Reaper if you have any other type of computer. I don't want you guys to use audio software like Audacity. There's always going to be a troll who are like, who's like, uh, you know, actually, and then they're going to have me um, uh, doing a little bit of... Um, they're going to say that they've gotten a lot out of audacity or something ridiculous like that. And that is just uh, very silly. I feel um, it's not a professional audio software and it's not what you want to be doing. So whether you're a voice actor or a musician, throw all of that out and you want to le learn to use a, uh, a proper type of audio software, even if it's inexpensive, it can be very proper and still record at the proper bit rates and everything like that um, and work just fine. Because what you have to realize is it doesn't matter which audio software you actually use to accomplish the goal. You're a vocalist. You're not going to be mixing necessarily or producing. Probably someone else will. And the light amount of mixing that you would need to do for a YouTube cover or something like that um, is going to be very quick and you can do that in this type of basic audio software quite well actually with all the same audio plugins that a professional would use. So there's really no reason why you can't do just as good of a job in, um, in a garage band as you could in Pro Tools at this level. The only reason you would really need to switch up to a higher end software would be again, if you decide that you really want to become a lot more serious about music production and everything like that. But when you're getting started, it's very overwhelming and you really just want to start at the very beginning. So if you have a Mac, by far the best bang for your buck is garage band. And believe me on my MacBook air and and on devices that are more lightweight, that don't have a lot of RAM, it works phenomenally well. It's got amazing built-in musician, I'm sorry, uh, musicians, built-in musicians, built-in instruments um, as well. And this is what you're seeing in the background here. Um, I have my software back here. So I've just got it open for you guys already so that you can um, be sure to, um, you know, kind of see the whole process here. So I opened it up. It's only 10 bucks in the app store. If you don't have a Mac, we're going to do Reaper later, but watch this anyway, because all digital audio workstations essentially work the same. So if you're just new to recording period as a vocalist, I really advise you to watch this anyway, even if you have a PC, because Reaper is going to be almost identical. Like it's really not that different. And also pretty much any 
DAW, audio software. Audio software is called DAWs, by the way, D-A-W. Let me write that in the chat, D-A-W. And that means digital audio workstation. Um, and this has been the name for like 25, 30 years. I actually minored in recording in college in addition to the music degree that I got where I studied classical singing and vocal pedagogy and all the other stuff I talk about on the channel. I minored in recording in a, lo a long, long time ago. So I learned to record on other digital work audio workstations like Pro Tools. I used Pro Tools for a number of years. Actually, nowadays, I myself am using Reaper instead of Pro Tools because, again, I don't mix or produce albums, but I do know plenty of people that mix and produce albums with Reaper. So let's get started. So when you open up a digital audio workstation like GarageBand over here, um, you end up uh, with a little bit of, you, you, you can have some tracks here. They call these tracks, each one of these little items here. Oh, why am I getting the Apple wheel of death here? I hate that. Loading slow AF. Um, all right, there we go. So You've got audio tracks here, and these are, uh, so you want to look at this whole thing here when you open up a project in GarageBand or Reaper or any DAW, you want to look at that this is the whole song. This is your whole song, essentially, from start to finish. And it goes from left to right here. So when the song plays, it scrolls through it towards the right. Um, and when you add tracks, they're layers on top of each other in the same song. However, the level of the layers, it's not like um, Photoshop. So it doesn't matter if I move the tracks above one another or below one another uh, or what order they appear in other than for organizational purposes, like personal preferences doesn't matter uh, which order these tracks appear in necessarily. And um, so it doesn't mean that the top track is, um, it doesn't mean that the top track is like above it in the mix. So they're not layers like Photoshop. So uh, your, your volume of which one is gonna be louder in the mix, all these instruments, you could have a hundred tracks here if you wanted. Um, from top to bottom, and they're all going to play simultaneously throughout the song. So if a part doesn't come in till halfway through the song, like your vocals, the instrumental will play, and you'll start recording your vocals when they come in. But all the tracks play at the same time. So your mix is where you raise the volume levels relative to each other. And also in the mix, you have stereo panning. So you have your volume between the instruments, louder or softer. Is the piano louder than the voice or is the voice louder than the piano? And then you also have uh, the stereo spectrum from left to right. Most of the time in your um, recordings when you're first getting started, let's approach this as though we're going to make a YouTube cover. Uh, I would not... Uh, worry about the stereo panning. I would make sure your vocals are panned to the center for right now. Stereo is left and right. So when people are mixing records, they're using this button here called pan to shift it to the left or the right, depending on what it is. Let's try it with some um, piano. You guys should just hear my uh, some funky <laughs> electric piano. Um, coming through there and okay so it's kind of silly sounding stupid but um, let's hit record and see what happens um, this is a MIDI instrument this is one of the built-in instruments in GarageBand if I want a track like that I actually go up here and say new track and then when we make a new track you can pick an instrument one of the software instruments that they've created or you can pick a line in uh, you want to use a microphone or line input. It actually doesn't matter which of these you choose. You can always change the track later or delete the track or whatever. So um, that's what I had done up here. But I kind of hate that sound. So let's go ahead to a regular piano for right now. I always like the Steinway uh, Grand Piano um, because I feel as though it's kind of the most realistic one in here. Oh, it's a little loud. 
So you can turn the volume down here. So, um, okay. So what you want to do is just basic recording. Let's see. I'm controlling this instrument, by the way, with a USB um, MIDI controller here. And it looks like this. Um, there we are. It's just a little piano thing. It's pretty much plug and play on a Mac. So here's the thing, guys. A lot of you PC guys are going to troll me for this, but I don't care. If you're a total noob to content creation, a Mac computer, not an iPad, because these softwares don't run that well. And also those devices have limited storage. But a Mac computer, even an older one, a refurbished one, something that's not brand new, unfortunately is going to be your easiest and most intuitive device. They're meant for content creators. They're meant for people who don't know what they're doing. They make it really straightforward and simple. Reaper will do this for those of you that are on a PC, but I'm telling you a lot of PC uh, users, unless you're super well-versed, which those of you that are well-versed and use them for gaming and stuff, that's different. Your computer will perform really well. Um, but those of you who haven't invested to that level of a PC, it's not going to work for you. So um, for everybody in, on Instagram who's watching, I'm streaming on YouTube and Twitch right now and teaching people how to record their vocals in GarageBand. So uh, if you're a total noob, when you start to record, it looks like this. You hit the record button here, this red button. It just looks like back in the day when there was tapes. But you guys probably aren't old enough to remember tapes. But you hit that. Oh. This clicking thing you're hearing, this is the metronome. I'm going to turn that off. That's if you want to stay at a specific beat while you're recording. So you notice it's moving. Time is passing here, but I'm not recording anything because I'm not playing anything. So I need to play. Oops. Okay, so you get the idea. So in MIDI, it just it draws that in there. But then... So also you can view the song in bars and beats, or you can view it in um, minutes and seconds. I prefer time, minutes and seconds. So um, I want to hear what I recorded back at 16 seconds. That would be 16 seconds into the song, per se. Um, and I would go back and just play it and just hear it again. So <sighs> I keep getting the spinning wheel of death today. So here we go. Here we go. Let's just listen. Okay, you hear what I just, what we just did. Okay, so that could be your accompaniment. Um, but realistically, for a YouTube channel, you're not going to, unless you can play the piano and you've got um, an instrument you can play, a MIDI instrument. If you're a piano player and you've never recorded, GarageBand would be great. All you'd have to do is get a, a better sized keyboard than the one I have. The one I have is just meant to sit on the desktop. It's not really meant to be played, but there's some uh, bigger ones you can get with a few octaves that are actually the right size of a piano key. And you could play your own accompaniment, especially if you did this metronome here. The metronome will help keep you in time. Click, click, click. You can set the tempo and the time of your metronome as well. But most realistically, those of you doing a YouTube cover are going to use some kind of accompaniment um, from uh, the internet, probably. So I always recommend that you try to get an instrumental accompaniment w with no vocals on it. That's essentially the equivalent of a karaoke accompaniment. Um, and when you're doing this, you want to try to make it easy on yourself. Sometimes I use, I just use a YouTube to MP3 ripper and I rip the karaoke tracks off of YouTube. If it's not uh, popular enough then you probably won't find a karaoke track and you may need to actually hire someone to make you an instrumental or you may need to um, uh, have a friend do it or hire a guitar player to do it if it doesn't exist. So in reality, though, you need to have an instrumental. So let's take an instrumental and load it in here. Um, this is from when I recorded a cover of Rain by Trivium um, in the with my guitar player, Chad. And um, Chad is in the band that I sing in called Helion Prime. Um, so 
uh, we did a Trivium cover on YouTube. And so he sent me that instrumental in that case. Someone had made it for me. But it wouldn't matter whether I ripped an MP3 off of YouTube as a karaoke accompaniment. Be careful with the websites where you do rip MP3s. Um, some of them can come with viruses and spam. Again, especially if you're on a PC instead of a Mac. So just be really careful if you're ripping stuff off of YouTube. Um, but I still recommend it. I do it all the time and I haven't had any adverse effects. So in this case, I'm actually able to just drag it in here. Another benefit of the Mac, I can just drag the file into the GarageBand. And then I have my accompaniment. And what's cool is I actually want to move this accompaniment. So the way it moves left to right again is time. So I'm not going to let it just sit here for six seconds. That's just how it ended up dragging in. I'm going to drag it over like this. And make sure it's all the way to the beginning. Okay. And um, I don't really need this piano track. So what you notice in GarageBand, if you click on a track and it becomes light gray, that means that's the track you're working with at the moment. Okay. And this means also if you want to record a track, it has to be the one that you have highlighted in gray. So right now, if I have this accompaniment track highlighted in gray and I hit record, it might accidentally record over my accompaniment. Now you can hit undo like any other uh, program, but um, that would happen essentially. Let's see what would happen. I'll hit record here. And yeah, you can see it's recording over, it's recording my voice over this Trivium track when, I, when it shouldn't be. So I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna actually say Apple Z, which is undo. And there you go. You don't have to worry. The cool thing about audio software, guys, you, you, you're not going to like permanently ruin anything. It's not permanently editing this file. So this file is still saved to my computer in its entirety. It's not like editing it if something like that were to happen. Or even if I cut it apart and edit it in this song and move it around, it's not editing the original file. I'll need to bounce out this material, I'll need to bounce this song out with, with the changes I make and create a new file in order for the audience to um, know what that is to, to, or to hear those changes. Otherwise, if you go to that same file on your file folder, it's going to be the same no matter what you do to it in here. Okay, so that's cool. These are not permanent or destructive edits. And that's pretty much the way that it is in every DAW. Okay, so uh, all we're going to need, since I'm not going to use MIDI and accompany myself on this YouTube cover, all I'm going to need is these two. So I highlighted this instrument in gray, and then I go up to track and I'm going to say delete track because I don't really need that one. All I need is my Trivium uh, instrumental accompaniment. And in this case, um, so for YouTube covers and auditions and things, you really need it to be an instrumental without vocals. Um, don't sing over vocals when you're trying to do stuff. It doesn't sound good. It's not professional. It's not the way you see uh, covers do. Even if you're new to recording, it's better to do it poorly than like over the original vocalist. So if you can find an instrumentalist, unfortunately, there's not a lot of good uh, plugins to remove the vocals. So what I'm using this accompaniment here, this is all these instruments bounced down to the stereo tracks. So when this was recorded by Trivium, it was done in a DAW with like hundreds possibly of tracks here. Here, this would be filled with tracks, multiple layers of guitar, multiple layers of bass, drums, multiple layers, and multiple layers of vocals. So probably at least 30 tracks minimum. And when you bounce it out, that's the act of taking the whole thing that you've done and creating a new audio file out of everything in here. And we'll do that at the very end. And that's what professional bands do too on a bigger scale. So when you have that final file, you can't access the vocals. You don't have the individual tracks like this. You cannot just mute or delete one of the instruments. So it's not, uh, you can't do that. So you've got to make sure you can try to find instrumentals without the vocals, which can be frustrating if you're doing metal. 
but this is just how it is. And fortunately, there's Fiverr. There's lots of places you can hire people and ask them toonedly. Um, some other places where you can have people maybe create uh, for, on like air gigs or something like that. Uh, an accompaniment for you without even knowing what you're doing. In fact, Toonedly, I think they can even make you an accompaniment for like an original song, even if you don't play any of the instruments and things like that. Um, so there's lots of services where you could have an accompaniment. In this case, my guitar player, Chad, had created this for me. Um, and he also, you can see in the beginning here, these lines, you can, some of the waveforms, the way they look visually will indicate to you how they're going to sound that I can tell is going to be a click track for me to have a couple of bars intro. So you may not have that in the instrumental that you download, uh, but most of the instrumentals will just have their own musical introduction. Rarely do the vocals come in like right away on the first beat. So you really don't need that probably. So, um, but let's hear the instrumental. There's the... Okay, so I think something is going on here. Uh, you have to check. So in GarageBand, highlight the track in light gray. So that means also when you highlight it that all the settings down here now apply to that specific track. So you've always got to be paying attention which one you've got highlighted. But here under plugins, you want to turn off the echo and the reverb on your um, setting here on your in, on the instrumental tracks. I'm getting some kind of weird echo here. It could just be like my streaming settings. Um, but um, I think that, uh, let me just see if I. Also, the space bar turns things on and off. The space bar plays or doesn't play uh, stuff. So this you want you want to hit the space bar when you want to play. It's really easy, and that's actually a standard setting in just about every DAW. And um, you know, uh, I I really want to make sure that you guys know some of the shortcuts. So when I'm hitting play, I'm actually just hitting space bar. Um, and so I'll go back to the beginning of the song. So remember it goes beginning to end, left to right. And if you're new to recording and stuff and you don't know music theory, view it in time, not bars and beats. Uh, and you're not really going to be able to use a click. Like if you're new to this stuff, you don't know what tempo the song's at, don't have a click. The, you, the instrumental will be enough for you. So in this case, then you would want to go to starting to record. So you have ideally a microphone plugged into the computer, either directly with a USB, or in my case, I go microphone to an interface to the computer. And microphone to the interface to the computer usually sounds a lot better. Um, although there's some really nice USB mics nowadays, actually, to be honest with you. Um, so either one, and you're going to set your input settings. So click on the, I, I had earlier created a track, track, new track, using a microphone, and you select your input here. Uh, for me, these are all the inputs available from my interface, and I have my microphone plugged in to input one. So they're numbered on my device, and that's really straightforward. If you have like a USB mic, it'll just show up here as the USB mic. Easy peasy. Click on it, and then you say create. Okay? Um, so I had done that earlier, so I'm just going to delete that track because I don't need two vocal tracks. So I'm going to... Um, this button here is to monitor yourself. So if you want to hear yourself while you're recording, I highly recommend that. 
but you need to wear headphones. Turn off your speakers, and when you're recording, you have to monitor through headphones so that everything, so that you do not get the sound of your instrumental in your microphone. You want this audio track to be able to be played by itself and just have vocals on it and have no instrumental on it. You don't want them mixed together. And so that means you've got to wear your headphones while you're recording. Um, so you don't get what we call bleed where other sounds are going into the microphone. You want to make sure you're in a quiet recording environment because this is all going to play a role with making a little bit of a mix. So say I'm auditioning for a band and this is the accompaniment. Uh, I would hit record to start singing. Let me find a spot where it's like clean singing in the song here. Um. Yeah, I don't really appreciate uh, you guys advertising other voice teachers programs in the chat because um, this is a vocal channel. So I might have to... Um, change that so anyway uh but so yes guys sorry but uh if you want to talk about that kind of stuff try to save that for a different topic i would rather hear you guys ask me recording questions today so um let's talk about um doing a little bit here with recording the vocals so so the clean vocals come in at the chorus most in the song because I could do the screams too but let's do the cleans okay so that's where the um, clean vocals come in and so I'm going to record just a little bit there for you guys um, and this is the part of the chorus in the song where he's like time will always be uh the thing that kills me truly. So I'm going to record a little bit and I'm going to monitor myself. So if I want to hear myself as I record, I'm going to hit that button. And I also recommend that you guys uh, use. Um, so this is to me. And this is to solo yourself just without the instruments. Um, but I also recommend that you guys add a little bit of echo, 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 echo. And reverb, reverb to uh, the vocal track when you're recording and a little bit of compression as well. So these things here are called plugins and you can add to them. You can add effects here uh, and note that you've got to have this track highlighted in gray and the effects that you do down here when you have this track highlighted affect this track. They're also not permanent. So even if I record with these on, it actually doesn't record onto the vocal audio file. The vocal audio file will be dry. So even if I'm recording with these on, um, it really doesn't, it doesn't affect the original track. I can take them off after I record it and listen to it without the reverb. Um, I can change the settings later. So it's cool. These are just effects on there, but they are not, um, permanently changing the file. They can be changed. They can be removed. All the audio file will be, it, uh, the, the true recording will just be the sound of your voice going through your microphone and it will sound what we call dry if you remove the effects. So the effects just help you hear yourself better and you can change them later. You're definitely going to want to put things on it. We call this mixing when you add some things to the audio uh, for the final result. And when you record, you may want to turn the instrumental down a little bit and your vocals up a little bit. Again, you're not going to send it out to YouTube this way. When you make your videos and things, you're going to readjust the levels later. So you're going to make the levels a certain way if you're recording. So I'm going to turn it down a little bit and then I'm going to hit record and try to do this, do just a little bit of it. So here we go. I think I missed my entrance. Hold on. <laughs> Wait, let me go back uh, a little bit before that. Here we go. Time will always be the thing that kills me truly. Da 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 na 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 na. I forgot the words. 
ba na 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 you know, I just forgot the words, so <laughs> I didn't recover of those, but I have forgotten the words. So uh, what you want to do is record. So there I recorded. So now let's listen to that back. Now when I hit play, I'm going to hear my vocals and I'm going to hear um, the trivium. And by the way, also to monitor yourself, you've got to have this highlighted as well. As soon as I click over here. You guys don't hear anything, right? Because I, I'm not monitoring anymore. So let's hear. When you start to hit play, it will also stop the monitoring. You can't, you're not going to be coming through the microphone anymore. So let's listen to that. Time will always be the thing that kills me truly. I think I'm singing the wrong notes as well. I think. Time will always be something like that. But you get the idea. So from there, you can adjust the levels. And same thing with screams. Let's, let's record harsh vocals. You can be recording them on the same track. A lot of times, though, I recommend you create a new track for the harsh vocals um, so that you can mix them a little bit differently. But if you're new, I recommend keep it easy, keep everything on the same track. And you notice I don't have to start at the beginning and just record all the way through. You can go around and record the sections out of order. We call this punching in. You're punching in the tracks. You're just putting in little parts of it. And this is how modern recording is done. It's not done recording it all the way through and then going back and getting like full takes of the song. It's kind of a pain in the ass to do that. You really just want to do small sections at a time and punch them in and keep recording those small sections till they're perfect. It goes a little bit faster. So let me hit um, record here and I'm gonna do the um, uh, the a little bit of screams yeah there's some words here I don't know oh! All right, so you get the idea. So, um, uh, so when I hit spacebar again, it comes. Yeah, there's some words here I don't know. Oh! Okay, so you've got both in there, and you can hear like the echo and the reverb are still. And um, basically, what I want to do now is I want to try to take um, and mess with the mix. So you guys would record your whole song from start to finish, all the vocal parts in order, clean, distorted. It's pretty straightforward. You want to watch your levels. You notice as soon as I start screaming, these forms got bigger. This is, this is how loud it is. So like you can see these waveforms are smaller. These are bigger. And so if they're really if you see the tops like this really going over the edge, it's in the red. It's going to do this thing we call clipping and it's going to start distorting. So you want to uh, adjust the input level then. There's going to be a dial either on your USB mic or on your in interface where you can turn down the level of your mic going into the computer. Excuse me. And you definitely want to do that. So you may have to test record a couple of times and make sure that your recording level isn't too loud, particularly if now you've switched from singing to screaming. You might have a different volume level on your microphone or your interface. We call this your input level or your gain. You may have a different gain setting for your clean singing and your harsh vocals. So, you know, you definitely have to um, keep that in mind. You need to to adjust your recording level and that's kind of why I'm suggesting record all your cleans first and then go back and record all your harsh vocals in a song like this and you can do that on the same track again just go out of order punch the parts in um, and so in this case then once you're done with the song once you've done we're gonna pretend I finished it which I did not but um, you're gonna mix it a little bit and that's gonna involve turning the instrumental back up pretty loud yeah! and making some adjustments to it. So then I probably turn the vocals down a little bit 
Uh, and you're just going to set the levels between the two to be however you'd like. You'll have to find a balance, you know, decide w what you'd like. If you like the instrument a little louder, try not to drown out your own vocals, though. If you're doing covers or auditions or something, keep it reasonable. But also be aware, try not to blast it. You might want to reference some other recordings and compare how loud the vocals are. Yeah! There's some words here I don't know! Oh! So I think that's a pretty good level. I would be like happy with that. I think maybe a little louder in the instrumental. So now you can see my final mix. So they call that mixing. Once you have all the tracks recorded and you're happy with all the vocal takes, and also make sure you're always Apple S'ing file save every few minutes save 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 ingrain that in your mind or you'll be really mad when you lose all your work um save your stuff a lot and so this is mixing deciding what the levels in its most very basic form guys there's so many advanced tutorials on recording and how to mix you can really fall down this rabbit hole i especially recommend checking out the unstoppable recording machine schools tutorials and things but again as a vocalist you want to keep this simple you don't want to overwhelm yourself you're not trying to be a mix engineer even professional musicians are not mix engineers we pay someone f famous for doing that exact thing to mix the record for example in this band matt heafy did not mix trivium someone famous who mixes bands and is famous for mixing mixed them and recorded them so you know typically outside of just doing our own covers we're not going to do our own mixes even on the very very pro level so don't stress out about mixing too much just get the vocals to sit at a nice volume and then you can mess with your plugins if you want more echo or more reverb or less in my case i feel like i want a little less of both here i feel like this echo is really drowning things out yeah yeah, I like, I like that better. And then for screams, I always like compression. So compression is not a thing that can add distortion or do anything like that. It's a, a, a plug-in you can put on an individual track. And it just sort of makes all of the levels, um, you know, even all the way across. And it just makes the scream sound a little bit fatter. And you can click on that and go in and mess with the settings here and see if there's one that you like let's try like medium uh let's try edge vocal and see how that compressor sounds um yeah, yeah. yeah i like that a lot better and so what you want to do is um, then you want to take your uh, you want to take your track. You can EQ it if you want. EQ when you click on that is um, taking your vocals and pulling up or down specific frequencies of it. If you feel like there's like a like an S or something in your voice you don't like, this is where you can kind of get rid of it. Again, the settings will apply to the whole track. So if you did clean and harsh vocals on the same track, it's going to do it to everything that's in this track here. And um, you want to, you can solo the track. So solo it where it plays without the instruments and you hit play. Yeah! You hear There's that? some words here I don't know! That's almost ear piercing. Sorry about that. So you can EQ some of these frequencies up or down. There's some words here I don't know. So when I brought that one down, it got it kind of got rid of some muddiness that I didn't really like there. So you can mess with the EQ. Don't overdo it. Less is more. Most of the time, you don't really need EQ on your vocals. Just let it be natural if you're new. Because I think a lot of new people do a lot um, more 
uh, with their vocal, you know, this like mess up the tone of their voice with the EQ. Don't try to use it as something to replace like your vocal tone. I recommend if you're new, just using presets. So just like the compressor, instead of me explaining compression to you, which would be a whole other tutorial. And there's already plenty of recording tutorials about that out there. You can go on YouTube, dive into other people's tutorials. Um, you, you can go to voice and you can just click one of these voice ones and test them all and decide if you like one or not. And you don't need compression. You can turn it off. You don't need to have these here. If you want to remove a plugin, you click over here and you say no plugin. Okay. And there are four slots, if you will, per track in GarageBand for plugins. So you can do up to four effects on them. So uh, I would go here and I'm going to use a compressor that actually I'm going to change this first slot so I can change what's in that slot to my friend Joel Wanasek's bus glue. This garage band's actually bringing up all the plugins I have, even though I use other DAWs with them usually. So it, this is a very professional, uh, plugin and, um, Oh, why? Okay. There we go. And, um, and this is by uh, Joey Sturgis Tones, but it's the Joel Wanasek bus glue for vocals. And um, this is a great compressor. And again, you don't really need to actually know anything about audio stuff. You can go here and um, you can uh, use um, your... You can basically just use your intuition with this. There's a couple of buttons here, crush and loud. So I'm going to put crushed a little bit. And yeah! There's some words here I don't know! Oh! Yeah, that's it. I like that. So that sounds pretty good. A little reverb, a little compression. I'm happy with it. And then just balance out the levels. I think the vocals should be just a little quieter still. And then boom. Yeah! There's some words here I don't know. Yeah, it's, I can't remember the words. Isn't that sad? I did a cover of this and don't remember the words. But... Anyway, so it works really good. And so then let's pretend you're done with the whole song. You're happy with the cover start to finish. It's got all your vocals. Then you go up here and you like the mix. Okay, so whatever your levels are between the two here, whatever your stereo panning is when you're finished, whatever settings you have here for your plugins, this is all going to be now printed onto the track. And it's going to become a permanent new stereo track with your vocals and the instruments all together. And that's what you're going to lip sync your video to or sing along to create your video. The reason you want to pre-record your vocals in most cases for YouTube covers is because it saves you a lot of time. It's very, very hard to get perfect vocals and a perfect video, especially if you're new. And it's going to take you a lot of takes because that's recording it all the way through. So again, if you're really, really precious about that and you want to do it live, that's up to you but I think it's going to be a lot harder for you. So I would pre-record it in here and bounce this track out and then record your video to this final track. And then if you were doing this for an audition, this is the track that you would send to your audition people. So I'm happy with the mix. I'm happy with the levels. I'm going to say file. Uh, oh, sorry. Share. And you've got these things, and at first you're like, oh, I can just share it to SoundCloud, to the media browser. I don't recommend doing any of that. Um, it's weird how it formats it to go to SoundCloud and all this stuff, so ignore all of that. Make it easier for yourself and make a file that you can just share on anything. You just want a file, like a WAV file, which is an audio file, an MP3 file, which is an audio file. Um, and... Uh, yes. So if you guys want to hear the, um, the Trivium cover, Chad and I actually did finish it. It's just on Chad's YouTube channel. All you have to do is, um, search for, uh, Chad Anderson, Mary Zimmer, uh, Trivium, Rain, um, and Helion Prime. We actually put it as a, a bonus track on our Japanese release. Um, I'll try to... 
uh, find the link for you guys and paste it in the in the chat. So essentially, when I did that with Chad, um, the final audio track was the video that I'm going to paste in the chat, and then I bounced it out. I did it exactly the way I'm telling you guys. I recorded my video afterwards. I actually used the same mic in the video that I recorded it on, but I'm standing in my living room in the video. It's pretty obvious I didn't record it in my living room. If you record in a big room like that, your vocals are going to have this like echoey tone that you can't delete. You can't delete things out of the audio track that get recorded. So if there's like a weird background noise in this vocal track or some fuzz or white noise you can't really get rid of it it's you can't you'd have to re-record it um you can't expect a plug-in to get rid of it so um uh you know that's the hard part about this guys so you've got to have like a relatively clean audio file there is like some noise remover things and stuff but just go in your closet and record you know it doesn't need to be an actual vocal booth this is a closet that i converted into a vocal booth essentially so that i could dampen it but clothes are dampening i mean keep it simple don't stress yourself out don't let like a gear barrier you're going to film your video later so that's the other reason you can record in a vocal booth where you have proper control over the sound and then you film the video after in a cool looking location because a cool looking location might not have the best sound you know and then you use your audio your studio audio track as your as your audio track this is how we do music videos as well traditional music videos we record in the studio and we go film the music video in cool looking locations okay so uh export song to disc is what you want right here export song to disc always 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 just do this don't do any of the other ones and then this is going to do what we call bouncing or uh, and bounce out the audio, uh, not in real time, uh, which is great because if you have like a 15 minute prog rock epic song, you don't want to sit here for 15 minutes while it bounces out. That's going to be a big pain in the ass. Um, it bounces uh, just not in real time. You could you could view it if you do video software as a rendering, if you, you want to think of it as a render. Uh, hi, Carlos. Hi, sweetheart. You guys should say hi to Carlos. He's my man. He's a badass vocalist. Uh, you guys might know him from Immortal Guardian. Um or some of you guys from Outworld and some of his other projects that he's been in. Um, okay, so here when you get the export song to disk, so you name the file. So I'm going to call it um, Trivium Cover Final, even though I already did that a long time ago. <laughs> but we're going to pretend. And then you say what folder you want to you want to save it in. Um, and then so you save it in, in this case, I'll just uh, save it in my voice hacks folder here. And then, uh, and then here, you want to do 24-bit. This is the standard quality for audio recording. So this is why it doesn't actually matter which DAW you use. If you're using the same bit rate and file size, uh, or I mean, sorry, file name, file format, no one's going to know the difference. They can mix it you know, it doesn't matter. Like there's nothing quality wise that's going to be any different. Um, so what I do is I click on the wave. I prefer a wave audio. Um, so that's a nice big fat audio file. And then we say, uh, export. So, and then you can see it goes through it, but it's going like really fast. It's not taking the whole length real time of the song to do it. Um, it's going really quite fast. And then it's got all your changes and everything. And then that becomes a solid audio file. Let's just bring that in to here so we can hear what that sounds like. Um, where's my voice hex folder? Okay. Um, okay. Let's bring that in here. So I'm going to mute this and this. And I'm going to drag that new audio file that I just made back into GarageBand just so I can hear it. The only reason I'm doing that, I could just preview it in any other audio player on the Mac or just hit preview or anything or hit spacebar on the file. Um, but you can't uh, see it. I don't have a Streamlab set up for you to be able to see it. So I'm just going to drag it in here so you can see it. So, okay, so now this new file, it's going to be another just stereo file, but it contains my vocals now. Um, so 
boom easy peasy so yeah uh let's see i gotta wait okay so let me go over here to the part what i recorded and now without the audio track so these are muted let's in fact let's delete these let's just hear what the new audio track sounds like let's make sure if they're muted you wouldn't hear them but um just to put everyone's peace of mind that's new this is just what I recorded. It's a new stereo audio track. Now, once you have the stereo track, though, I can't from here without going back to the original project file, I cannot adjust any of the levels. So that's why it's important that you don't do what I just did and delete the tracks and save your audio files um, and your mixes fully, your whole garage band or DAW session. You want to save it and make sure that you can go back and access it so you could change it so you could balance out a different version of it if you didn't like that mix you want to take this mix and listen to it in the car and listen to it on different sources and see if you still like where the vocals sit um and you can come back and make changes before you make a youtube video so yeah you get the idea right so now that's all mixed together and that would be permanent. Like there's not much I can do about that. So guys, it's kind of a crash course, but it's a quick get you started on how to record vocals in GarageBand. We're going to do Reaper. Reaper. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. Someone's mentioning that uh, there is an 11 hundred dollar program that'll de reverb and salvage a living room recording but uh i'm not once again i'm not directing this at working professionals as a working professional doesn't need the tu this tutorial right <laughs> why would a working professional need a basic introductory tutorial on garage band uh, they wouldn't they're not watching it with me so i would say to all of you noobs do not buy the eleven hundred dollar a uh, program that will deverb audio because that's a waste of your money. Don't worry about ha trying to polish turds. Uh, it will not cost you anything just to do a proper recording in your closet or a quiet room. Um, don't try to like de reverb or de noise audio. It always sounds like crap. And again, it will be something very, very expensive. And this is what you pay. I mean, that's more expensive than paying the professional guy just to mix it. So this is also why you pay guys to mix it. So if you really wanted your YouTube covers to sound professional or an audition that you do um, for someone, then you could take that vocal track and the instrumental track and send them separately to a person to mix. So uh, let's let's take a look at that that concept here. So uh, let's say I wanted to um, let's see. Do I have a file here where I've recorded? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, so. Uh, let's say I wanted to take those Trivium vocals and bounce them out to my uh, mixer, to a person who mixes. Um, I would solo the vocal track. And then, so after, let's pretend this is once again full of my finished recorded vocals. I would solo that. If you're going to send it off to be mixed to someone, you turn off all of your plugins before you bounce it out. So you want to bounce it out totally dry. You want to set this level to zero and this level to zero. And then you hit share export song to disk. And you want it to also be a wave file. Uh, yeah. So I knew there would be somebody like actually me with some pro level stuff in the comments, but we want to really think about that this is for beginners. So those of you guys who are here are thinking on the pro level, that's not where we're at today. There's plenty of professional mix tutorials and schools around. Okay. Uh, so you, so there's a lot of resources for you. If you're a professional, this is not one of them. Okay. This is for noobs. Um, and so we would export it just the same as we would, uh, in uh just if we did the full mix okay just soloing the track so i hope that makes sense and then you would send that solo 
audio track. You would save it as like JoJo's vocals. And then you would send it along with your instrumental accompaniment as two separate audio files to the mixer. And you could actually find some people on Fiverr that do mixing um, as well. Uh, you know, like it doesn't have to be the most famous person in the world. Um, so if you don't want to mix your own cover, but I don't think it's really that hard or too much to ask for you guys to, um, you know, try to, uh, basically, um, I don't think it's too much to ask for you guys to try to basically mix your own levels, if you will, if that makes sense. Um, uh, cause it's just the vocals and it's the instrumental. So just realize most of the people on YouTube aren't operating on a professional level and they're not professional mixes. They really, really aren't. Um, when you get to a point where your channel is huge, then you can worry about that. But most of the audience members, unless it's just awful, but I think you could come up with some decent levels on your own in a software like this, even if you are a total noob, where it will sound pretty good and pretty decent and um, will not uh, be, you know, uh, you know, uh, and will not like, you know, where it's not going to be horrible. It's not going to be professional. But yeah, there, yeah, there's a lot of people uh, offering their mix services on Fiverr or their mastering services. Doesn't mean it's going to be five dollars, guys. Fiverr doesn't mean five dollars. <laughs> but um, you know, if you if you if you want, you just want to listen to people's examples. Basically when you're on like Fiverr or one of these like hire for hire type of sites, uh, when you're looking for people, they're going to be probably people who are also learning to mix. Like if they're super professional, they're probably not going to be offering their services. Uh, I, I don't know who knows. Maybe, maybe they do because some people on Fiverr might have templates and things and they just throw it in a template. Um, you know, and, uh, that might be why it's inexpensive and they could be super pro. So I would say, just listen to the examples. If you like how their mixes sound, that's cool. And you want it to be in the same genre as well. Don't, don't like send your metal song to be with screaming to be mixed by this guy whose only examples are like acoustic folk, you know, doesn't really make sense like that. Um, so, or you could just find somebody who's sort of new to recording, but has some YouTube, um, examples as well and directly message them or email them be like, Hey, you know, how much would you charge for a mix? But I would say that in the beginning, I wouldn't do that. I would just record your own basic vocals and then use your phone or something an iMovie or something and, uh, sync that audio with the video. And that's another tutorial for another time, how to sync the audio with the video. So this is just a really, really, really basic introductory tutorial guys. Um, it's not meant to be advanced. It's not meant, it's just meant to get you started. You're really going to learn by diving in there and doing it. So vocalists, you, a lot of you guys are gear phobic because you don't play instruments or you're self-conscious. Um, yes, this is true. Some, uh, uh, Ricardo, the van composer, who's also, you guys should check out his channel. Um, he, uh, he 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 records in a, a a mobile van and and uses a lot of DAWs and software and yes there are softwares like Cubase and PreSonus these are other DAWs the same version of something as GarageBand and again they work the same the tracks line up the same uh, and and they come with the audio interface so for example my sister who's a guitar player and a guitar instructor uses PreSonus which came with the interface that she bought so sometimes there are people when you buy your interface that you get your audio software with it you get a free DAW with it and they're usually really great. Cubase and PreSonus are amazing. And there's very, very professional people who use both of those. So again, uh, um, this is $10. So, uh, if you have a Mac, you know, so it really depends on, on what you want to do. And maybe you're not ready to buy an interface and you just want to experiment for a little while and you have a Mac, just try to mess with it a little bit, you know, um, spend a little bit of time. Cause like, again, the way I learned this stuff in college was by showing up after hours 
and messing with our at the time <laughs> was a brand new Pro Tools rig because um, it was a long time ago and it was like new to us and new to the college and I spent lots of time working on different DAWs and sitting in the studio and just messing with things and recording my own vocals and learning through trial and error so don't only watch my tutorial. I think there's probably a lot more detailed tutorials. Um, but I also want to keep it simple because, again, right away, everybody's always ready to overcomplicate it and start actually with the most high level mix things and start overwhelming you guys with professional level stuff. And that's a huge barrier to content creation is the impression that you have to be on a, a huge professional level in fact some of the biggest youtubers i've seen don't have very good audio quality and stuff because they're not audio engineers they're like a makeup artist or something so you really need to simplify and don't worry about it because the audience a lot of times isn't a mix engineer and if you're new to youtube covers and just putting yourself out there don't be afraid to disable the comments i don't even like leaving the comments on on all my tutorials but the reason I do is because it's an education channel right and you guys want to engage with me and ask me questions and I think you should be allowed to but if you're just a solo artist making vocal covers and representing yourself on YouTube you actually do not need to allow the likes and dislikes by the way you don't have to have that turned on and you don't need to have comments turned on and I highly recommend leaving comments off for like at least a year if you're new if you're brand new you've never put out records you're new to recording yourself you're new to making covers don't listen don't even open the door for trolls and haters for at least a year and then once you're comfortable and then after about a year you'll probably have like really really good skills and uh, a few subscribers and some things like that. And then I would stay, start letting some comments in, but be, be very, very diligent with that delete and block button. Don't let people use your channel or your platform as a place to talk negatively to you about your progress. You know, only you know your progress and what you've done. And so you want to delete and block people and uh, because it, they don't know, they're, they're not living in your shoes. And, and again, you don't know uh, what kind of day somebody's been having. It might not be genuine feedback. Also, the person may not be a singer at all. And so you can't just don't listen to commenters, leave it disabled, especially while you're learning, because a year from now you might um, start making more quality videos. You might swap out what you have on the channel when you start um, trying to, you know, if it's not like educational content or if it's just music covers, you guys, the world used to not be able to comment on music. People would put out music videos. They were on MTV. We couldn't say any comment about it except to our friends. And same thing with the radio. It used to be like that for decades. So people do not need to be commenting on your stuff. If there's musicians you trust, and you can talk to them about, um, you know, what their feedback is. Uh, that is going to be much more sincere and genuine and not just some random comment on YouTube. And you want to do go for feedback that way um, and keep learning. You know, every time I do this stuff, like I said, today, I spent all day messing around trying to get my GoPro to be the webcam. I started the stream. Didn't work very good. Um, and I just immediately switched back to the old cam. So it's not my favorite. It's not the most high quality, but it didn't stop me from doing this video for you guys, right? Um, when I make my actual regular YouTube videos, I do do it more high quality. So, and you got to just roll with it, you know? So don't, you know, with musicians, it's finished, not perfect, okay? So just remember that. And I hope this gets some of you rolling. And just know if you open up PreSonus or Reaper or Cubase, it's largely going to work exactly the same. The buttons are just going to be in slightly different places. They're all going to offer slightly different features. But I think when I do my tutorial on Reaper uh, with the same thing, you're going to be shocked at how pretty much exactly the same it is. Again, especially if you're just recording vocals. You're not mixing or producing albums. You're just recording vocals to a pre-recorded accompaniment. So, and if you record your own accompaniment, it's going to be very simple MIDI. So, uh, still, it's going to be a, uh, an instrumental. So thanks, everybody. I really hope that this tutorial will be helpful for some of you. Thanks for helping me test out my um, live stream capabilities because this is brand new. I've never done that before. I've never used Twitch before. So thank you all. And hopefully, again, as things improve,